Hello, good morning, good afternoon and good evening depending on where you're joining us from today. So thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Fall and Winter Herbal Pharmacy with Anastasia White. So my name is Charlie O'Horo, I'm the Marketing Director for Sue Wen Herbs. So I just want to touch on a few housekeeping topics before we start. So we are in webinar mode. So that means that the, your audio and your video are both switched off. So you can relax and just sit back and enjoy the webinar. The webinar is being recorded and the replay will be made available at suewenherbs.com. Also, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, you should be able to see a Q&A chat box in your Zoom control panel. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them um, in, the, in the control panel in the Q&A chat box. I'll be monitoring the Q&As uh, throughout the webinar and then we'll save any questions specifically for Anastasia at the end of the presentation. Now we just have a few words from Sebastian Machosha before we hand over to Anastasia. Hello everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Sebastian Machosha and as some of you might be able to tell, I am Giovanni's son. I'm absolutely thrilled to have Anastasia present for us today. She's an excellent presenter and I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of today's webinar. Before I hand over to her, I just wanted to say a few words. I'm proud that my father's herbal formulas, which he created some 25 years ago, are still used by practitioners today all over the world. And it is my intention to continue his legacy to ensure his formulas are made available to practitioners and made to the highest possible quality standards. I still remember as a child walking to his clinic and seeing floor to ceiling cabinets filled with different herbs. And I used to love opening them at random to see what exotic herb would be uh, inside. I've been very busy the past few months making much of my late father's written material, be it educational presentations, videos or documents available online. And I would encourage you to visit the website suewenherbs.com to discover what's new. There's also now a practitioner support team whose details are also available on the website to assist practitioners who have day-to-day -day questions on any of the formulas. And finally, I'm delighted that we've been able to open an online shop for practitioners in the USA and Canada, offering you very competitive prices. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Anastasia. Enjoy the webinar and stay well. And now I will hand over to Anastasia. Hello. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm delighted uh, to be here with you today. And um, I just gonna review a little bit of how it's gonna go. Um, I will be talking about the uh, the formulas and I will in a moment put up a uh, the handout so that you can I'll share my screen with you so you can actually see that that handout will be available after the seminar at Sue Wen um, on the practitioner support page uh, I, I think it'll be obvious where it will be I'll talk about the formulas and um, the dosing considerations for about an hour at that point, I'll ask how many questions there are, and if there aren't many, then we will, I will continue to, to lecture for another 10, 15 minutes, and then um, for the last 15 minutes, we'll take questions. Um, I am really happy to be here with you, and I hope all of the technology goes really well, and we've got a, um, we've got a smooth webinar. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen with you. <clears throat> Okay, there we go. So this will be the handout again that will be available to you. Um, you know, it was it was difficult for me to decide what a fall and winter pharmacy would be. And um, there are so many formulas to choose from that I these were the ones that just came to me for something as short as this webinar is. And I know that there's many, many more and I could go on and on and on. But again, you can only, I don't want your ears to burn with, with so much information, you can't take it in. So I'm going to start with the formula Jade Screen. And um, 
this is sort of the obvious fall formula really for the, for the allergic season. Now, some people are allergic all year long, and this formula can be used also in a chronic situation as well in a slightly different way in terms of the dosage. And I think that's one of the things that I want to really impress upon um, you as practitioners, especially when you're doing now that the, the tele, you know, I call it tele-herbalist, you know, now that we're doing more online things, you want to kind of hone your skills to um, on seeing people online and knowing the formulas, how they can be used. Um, so the jade screen is basically a formula that impairs the wind. And what we want to talk about, what we want to emphasize with this formula is wind. So it's the, it's the, the impairing of the descending of wind that causes uh, the allergic reaction. So wind is the pathological uh, deterrent, the pathological agent that we're talking about. Not so much phlegm, but more wind. And this is an, an important differentiation and distinction that um, you want to make with your patients. And particularly, again, when you're doing a tele-herbalist uh, consultation is you want to make sure that there, that it's really wind that is the prominent thing. And how you know that is there's a lot of sneezing. You know, there is a runny nose, and most, most people have runny noses when they sneeze, yeah? After a sneeze, most people get uh, a little bit because of the inflammation that's happening. So the body is trying to bring yin to the body, yeah? So you get that. But if it's a constant, constant runny nose, um, we might be looking at adding a formula to it. Now, when, when I also want to talk about this formula in the sense of it being uh, a allergic rhinitis. So in Chinese medicine, how are we differentiating a rhinitis? It's, by, it's a cold situation. It's primarily a cold because that's your primary differentiation in using Chinese herbal medicine is hot and cold. Yeah, that's your first yin and yang that you wanna, that you wanna consider when you're thinking about a formula. So this is more of a cold situation. Um, again, it's a runny nose, it tends to be watery, it tends to be clear. Now, if, as I was mentioning a moment ago, this is secondary to a sinusitis. So in some patients who are terribly allergic, and I, I, again, I would look, somebody who has the chronic rhinitis, sinusitis, rhinitis, sinusitis, for most of the year, I would say that using these formulas, are, you're, you're, you're really getting the symptoms and you're not really getting at what the problem is. And I would look to the gut for the real problem for that. But aside from that, treating it, you can treat using jade screen and welcome fragrance kind of back and forth, yeah? So when it's a cold situation and when we call it a rhinitis, we're gonna be using the jade screen. It oftentimes, what happens when, especially when you have a constitution of somebody who's got damp heat as the constitution, then you, then you are going to get more, they're gonna go more into the, the uh, secondary uh, situation of sinusitis, where there is some kind of, um, something's growing, yeah? It could be a bacteria, it could be a fungus. It's very, very common these days, uh, I think, with funguses in the nose. Again, I would be looking at the gut, of cleaning the gut up for that situation to be happening. But you will, these are very good for the symptoms. Um, welcome fragrance and jade screen. So let's just finish up with welcome fragrance. I tend to get ahead of myself. I'm sorry about that. I want to, if I want to um, interject about the limpid C using it with the jade screen. Now, again, one of the things that I wanted to do, you can, you can go onto Giovanni's uh, Suwen website. And you, there's so much information. I mean, if you knew Giovanni at all personally, he was prolific in his ability to standardize Chinese medicine. Um, 
and that means how it was how it's which is standardized medicine is how is it going to how can i teach it how can many practitioners use it yeah um so you can go on to the website and you can read all kinds of stuff but what i want to point out to you are, are things that i didn't see on the website nuances ways that, from just my clinical um, experience of many 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 years using and teaching these formulas um, how you can use them um, and go in kind of easily um, in understanding using the formulas so limpid c start limpid c is you're going to use it with jade screen when there is more phlegm yeah so it's not just you know the wiping your nose when you sneeze but it's it's also kind of all the time and it may tend to be not so clear and watery but slightly white yeah um as it goes to the yellow side um there tends to be more pain um but when it's to the lighter side so it it, it treats damp cold and damp heat but I would be using, uh, and you can be using it with welcome fragrance, but I put it here because it, it tends, the, the historical antecedent formula tends to be more for um, a colder situation, a more damp cold uh, phlegm. You can use that together. And we're gonna talk about how you, would, how you would do the dosages in the next page. So that's jade screen and, and limpid seed. Jade screen when there's allergic rhinitis, and jade screen when there's more phlegm involved yeah they're just really going it's all the time constantly constantly you might want to add the limpid c to that the second one is welcome fragrance and i just briefly talked about it being for more sinusitis it's more when there's chronic damp heat now there is a, there is some deficiency of chi form herbs in here and this is again where giovanni makes his formulas to his understanding from his clinic is that when you've got somebody who you're who you got who's got sinusitis and particularly if it's if it's any reoccurring sinusitis there is a deficiency of chi from any kind of chronic disease and really there's a deficiency from chi from even acute things it's just an acute deficiency as well but welcome fragrance is used when there's a sinusitis so the phlegm is dark there the headache is very much stronger most people know when they have a sinusitis it's the the headache tends to get very very um intense and there is quite a fatigue as you know people get much more fatigued i think um with welcome fragrance people who need welcome fragrance than jade screen in a way now if it really is a sinusitis you can treat it it doesn't necessarily have to be treated with antibiotics expel toxic heat adding to welcome fragrance um, works wonderfully i've used it many many times um, so that can be that can be done now what i want to say about these two formulas and especially these two formulas together welcome fragrance and expel toxic heat they are going to be really cold yeah what what is the side effect of giving cold herbs to a patient the side effect of giving cold herbs to patients is that it can um, make the spleen the stomach and the spleen cold so we can put out the, the digestive fire. Now, using these herbs long-term, it can put, the, put it out long-term. Using it in an acute situation, it's going to just put it out for an, in, in, in temporarily, yeah? But they will do that. So if that happens, my suggestion is one of two things. You need to lower the dose a little bit. Well, first of all, take it with food. If there's any kind of, adverse reaction to the herbs almost no matter what it is really um they're getting they're getting a reaction they're getting a they're getting something but it it doesn't feel good taking the herbs with food is the first thing that you want to do yeah somehow you know the digestion with the food and remember that you know herbs are the foods that you don't want to eat basically <laughs> um, it, it helps to mellow out any of those adverse things. So I would do that first. Um, but welcome fragrance and ex expel toxic heat are two very good formulas for um, acute sinusitis infections. Yeah. 
So those kind of take care of the nose part of it, which is, you know, which is affected again in that fall, in the fall with the reaction most oftentimes to pollens and now to anything, to everything, because there's so much in the air. I know, you know, I'm sitting here in Northern California as, you know, the fires are burning and there is so much, I mean, I have a, you know, it's a, a, a chronic situation just from the, the smoke, um, and the pollution in the air. So these formulas, you know, work very, very well um, for clearing, just clearing the, the, the nose and the sino and the, and the lung, yeah? And that connection. So here we are in the head with, you know, headache, uh, uh, some sore throat sometimes, especially with uh, where the throat, where you get this uh, uh, in the back of the throat where you're constantly swallowing phlegm, the throat gets really sore. Um, it, it, there's pollen gets back in the throat um, when you have sinus uh, sinusitis and infection and a, a, a acute chronic heat. Um, it gets swollen and so the throat. And then in clear chi, we're kind of moving down to the lung in terms of uh, the metal season uh, and what, how it affects the, the head and the lungs, yeah? And then we're gonna move on to the skin. And that's kind of how I, that was my train of thought as I thought about the metal season and um, the, what, how I would follow the, the five elements in terms of the formulas that I'm presenting. And the next formula is clear chi. Clear chi, again, um, it, it, there's a, always a theme with, um, Giovanni had many themes to his understanding of Chinese herbal medicine and to the way that he pre presented it and saw it. And you see another, the same theme as we saw in Jade's screen, we're gonna see here in clear chi. And in clear chi, we're talking about, um, again, the wind being the pathological, the, the major pathological component to the disorder would be wind. Oftentimes we're thinking phlegm when we think about, you know, asthma. Um, and there can be, in some cases, there can be a situation where there is phlegm. And then I'll talk about that in a minute. But the formula itself, clear chi, has to do with descending lung chi. So expelling wind. So the, we would say that the wind is the pathological factor that's not allowing the lung chi to descend. Yeah? Um, and this is really what wheezing is about. Wheezing is, is wind. Yeah. So, you know, you know the, the, the symptoms are, are all here. Now, again, if there's an allergic rhinitis with the wheezing, there might be, there might be the use of combination of jade screen and clear chi together. This is common. Yeah. Um, and, and if there is a little bit of phlegm, you might want to use the limpid seed with the clear chi. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to talk again about the dosage when you're using two formulas. Okay, let me just start. If you're just, if you're just starting out, you're very starting out with herbs. Um, I would say use one formula very most often. Yeah. But if you feel that you grasp it or you're more experienced and you feel confident using two formulas, then we're going to talk about the dosage. When you're using two formulas, understanding the dosage is, is the key to me to get to the success, yeah? Of where you're going to take more of one formula and, and less of another formula and why that, why you would do that. A kind of a yin-yang differentiation there. I think that's very important. So J screen and clear chi could be used together and possibly limpid C and clear chi could be used together. The thing of it is, is that the more wheezing you have, the more you understand that it's wind. Um, the more, if there's a little bit of wheezing, but there's, you, you're seeing substantial phlegm, then is where the clear chi and, and the um, limpid C would be coming in, yeah? 
Um, if it's all in the nose and there's lots of sneezing and wheezing, then the jade screen and the clear chi would be the two together. Um, what more can I say about these three? I think I've said it. Okay, now we're gonna, now the next thing that I came to being the metal element and, uh, and the lungs was the skin. And again, thinking back, oftentimes that would have been um, also when I would have patients with, who had eczema and um, that it would oftentimes flare up at this season. There's an excellent formula called Clear Luster that um, Giovanni has put together. And again, it expels wind. Remember, this is the, this is the, um, the external wind that has come in um, is, is a key pathological component of the metal element. Um, and it's also a key component when we come around to, to the spring and the, and the liver, but it comes in the form of the blood with the liver. So in this case, again, we're looking at expelling wind. Um, and that causes, the wind factor causes the movement around the body, uh, the itching um, is caused, partly caused by the wind factor. Um, it's also caused, itching is also caused by the blood, heat. Heat in the blood will cause itching, yeah? So clear luster is basically for skin rashes um, and eczema, eczema, excuse me, and dermatitis, yeah? So in a chronic eczema, just to give a little brief dosage thing right here, in a chronic eczema, you would be using probably a lower dose. But in, a, in a, an acute dermatitis, you would be using a much higher dose of this formula, yeah? This is a cold formula. It's going to cool the blood. It's going to resolve dampness and pretty much damp heat, clearing heat. So the formulas that are in it um, are going to be for clearing damp heat. Um, what can I say? With ever using a formula for the skin, um, it's, it is not uncommon that in the first couple days, the symptoms would get worse. Um, I haven't found that so much using pills as I found using decoction. Um, but I do want to give that caveat because um, there is, as the wind gets expelled, you know, it's, it's almost like you're, um, you're expressing, you're expressing it uh, and it's coming out. But it should only be, you know, just for a couple days. They should see improvement in a few days, yeah? Not, I would say, it's hard for me to say, but you know, in four days, if, there's, if, there, if it's still, not improving at all, um, and they at all, and they might even feel like it's getting a little worse. Then you've got a you've got an issue that you need to address. Um, but it does it it can let's just say not ten it can um, get a little bit worse the first few days. Um, but that's a good sign. Uh, again, that's um, that's Chinese medicine for you. That's all I can say. It's not it's not Western medicine, and the body reacts. Um, differently because the, the herbs are more wanting to balance your body rather than suppressing, yeah? Pharmaceuticals are going to suppress the things um, and the Chinese herbs are going to treat the symptoms but also try and go deeper than the, just the symptoms. And this is one of those, um, one of those times where it can, on the skin, giving the herbs, it can get a little bit worse. Now, the Gloria C is a great formula that you want to follow up the clear luster with, for one thing. It's a great follow-up because once you've gotten, you've expelled the wind, cleared the heat, cooled the blood, and resolved some of the dampness with the clear luster, you're going to want to then nourish the skin. Yeah, you want to bring the blood and the circulation back into the, into the, the area that has been damaged. This is an important um, follow-up. This helps um, from scarring. It helps from uh, just, again, the most, I guess the most important thing is nourishing. So bringing back blood and circulation to the area. Gloria C. 
Um, it's, a, it's an excellent formula for tonifying, nourishing uh, the liver blood and um, resolving a little bit of dampness and cooling the blood as well. So it's got a little bit, but the emphasis of the formula is for nourishing the skin. But you're also there resolving a little bit of dampness and cooling the blood a little bit too. This is why this formula, I wanna say, is an excellent formula that I discovered um, for menopausal women. Many menopausal women come and say they have their skin itches. It's dry skin, their skin itches. Well, oftentimes it has to do with liver blood deficiency. And this has been a very helpful formula as a caveat, um, Gloria C, to um, nourishing the liver blood. And again, whenever there's itching, there is some wind and some uh, blood heat. Um, so again, menopausal women or any kind of woman actually, who, you know, any kind of person who's just itching telling you that the skin is itching, and particularly if you're seeing any kind of blood deficiency, and that's why I said women, because, because women tend to be uh, blood deficient much more than men do. So those are, those are the, the fall formulas, yeah? Um, and just to just do a quick review of those, um, we, want, we looked at jade screen, so it's the metal season, we're kind of starting at the top of the head and we're coming down into the metal element um, uh, associations in, uh, to the lung, yeah? So the first one was jade screen, again, for the rhinitis. Um, the key understanding of what this formula is about is wind. Uh, we talked about adding limpid C to that if there's um, phlegm involved rather than more. And what is the difference between the, the mucus when it's phlegm or uh, when it's colored or cleary, clear watery is, you know, we call it phlegm when it gets colored. Um, when it's very, very clear, we call it more damp. Yeah. So when it gets colored, you could add the limpid C. The welcome fragrance is for the sinusitis. This is when there's an infection, when there's much more damp heat. Um, you're, um, anybody who's ever had a sinus infection knows what it feels like. Um, luckily, I didn't have one till way later in my life, but boy, when I had one, man, I knew exactly then what they were talking about those years. Um, and if you want to add to that, if it's, it's quite severe, you want, might, want, might want to add the expel toxic heat. Um, if you would think, if you don't want to use an antibiotic, this would be really good. If it's really, really severe, it might even be um, good to add it to the antibiotic, antibiotic. And especially if somebody has been taking antibiotics for a long time for their sinusitis. The antibiotic is not working very well anymore and adding the expelled toxic heat is going to be very beneficial for the, the clearing up of uh, that and the resolution of the sinusitis. Finally, we, and then sec, next we went down into the uh, lungs and we talked about clear chi. Again, the key thing is the wind, the wind being the pathological agent. And um, this is what you really hear when you hear that wheezing. <clears throat> and in the wheezing, you can hear whether there's phlegm or not. It's pretty easy to hear that. Now, if you're doing telemedicine, you may not see that, but you can ask your patients these questions. If you're going to do telemedicine, the best thing that you can learn is to ask the right questions. That is, that's going to take you a long, long way in the telemedicine. And then finally, <clears throat> the skin, excuse me, and its relationship to the lung. The outer skin, the Chinese say. It's our outer, excuse me, the outer lung. And we clear Lester for the skin rashes, the eczema, the dermatitis, um, and uh, this, this formula is, would then be followed up by Gloria C um, for nourishing. Okay, um, so those are, that's what I chose for the fall. Now the winter ones was, were even kind of harder. So I guess I wanna start the winter ones with, by saying to you that if you're wanting to know about treating viruses, um, there is a page on Suwen Herbs that I made up at the beginning of uh, the spring. On, and it's very specific about formulas and dosage for treating virus. And that's available on the practitioner support page. And again, I think um, it will be obvious to you that my name is somewhere on that page and hopefully at some point there'll be a picture of me that will give you um, a, an easy 
identification for um, my offerings to Sue Winters. Um, and that will tell you about the viruses. So rather than talking about prevented viruses um, and treating viruses on this page, um, I'm gonna talk more about uh, more sort of internal rather than external um, ways that um, the season of winter, winter and fall will affect the body, yeah? So we're gonna go more to the water element here and we're gonna talk about how uh, formulas that particularly enhance kidney yang is the first group of formulas. Um, interesting because with global warming, how much yang we need anymore um, <laughs> from that level. Um, but we do in fact, and it's good to know when and I think that we talk about global warming, but I think it's m much of a situation of back and forth, yeah? It, yes, it's tending to just be warmer, but it's really erratic. So I think that we'll see really erratic cold as well. And um, these kinds of things coming in from outside where the, when the nature is so disturbed are very disturbing to us. Um, as we can see, as we all are seeing now. So I think it's important to, to look at the yang and kind of understand treating the yang. And Giovanni has some wonderful formulas for doing that. I first want to start out with strengthen the root, which is a kidney yang tonic. And this is, this is a formula that is, uh, some of Giovanni's formulas, he, uh, there are no historical antecedents, meaning that he, this was a formula that he made up in his clinic enough that he felt it was worthy to be in a line. Um, and then there are ones that are based, um, uh, meaning the whole entire uh, classical antecedent formula is part of his formula. And this is one of them, strengthen the root is the Yogwe one, um, uh, tonify the right kidney formula. And um, it tonifies kidney yang and it nourishes uh, the blood. Um, I think everybody, I would hope that everybody on this call would know the differentiation clearly of yin and yang deficiency. That's kind of one of the key things that you would learn. I think it gets tricky when it's both yin and yang deficient symptoms. And that's where it takes a more nuance to understand this. Using strength in the root you're pretty much looking at, at that. But again, we're gonna, we, could, we can combine um, strengthen the root and nourish the root um, if, you, if there's symptoms of both. And I'll talk about um, that a little bit in, in a minute when we get to the, to the nourish the root, the yin, um, the zogui one, yeah? Um, so I'm not gonna go into the symptoms here, but strengthen the root. I'm gonna go into a little bit of um, differentiation for what Giovanni did to the formula to make it slightly different. And I think the one thing that stands out to me is he put Renshen in the formula. So most kidney tonics or, or Zogwe one is not focused at all with any Renshen in it. So you've got a, also a, uh, a Yang Chi tonic in there, yeah? I thought that was a very nice addition uh, that he put in there and worth pointing out it, for those of us who are experienced um, practitioners, herbal practitioners. The next one I chose was invigorate the root. And really it's very, I'm going very um, kind of classical with you here. Um, and you know, the, the, the formula that we think about in coldness um, for people who have truly kidney problems where the bones are affected, the bones, the joints, the ligaments, and particularly in the case of invigorate the root, it's more, it, it is clearly a constitution of, of a kidney type person, and this is affecting the bones, the cold is affecting the bones. So you were, ex the, again, the wind is again part of this. This is as the wind, um, comes deeper into the body and goes into the joints, or maybe not deeper, but goes into the joints, 
I think probably is a better way of saying it. So any kind of arthritic pain, it's a big formula and it, it's, it's very good for um, people who feel muscular skeletal pain around the background of some yang deficiency, which is really a very common thing. You know, we, we might want to say for older people, um, but not necessarily, I don't think. I think there's a lot of people who have wind um, and you can tell by how you know, popular it is to have your joints replaced. That there is certainly, there is that kidney, that weakness of the kidney, weakness of the jing, um, weakness of the zhi that is happening. I think it's also happening kind of globally as well too. The yin and yang are being very attacked on the outside, on this hyper yang on the outside in our external world. The next one is aroused power. This is one of Giovanni's formulas as well. This one I, I chose, although it, 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 the focus from Giovanni was more for impotency and um, uh, the sexual function, um, I, I also think that this is important for um, being depressed and not just for um, sexual function, but it's, it's talking about the relationship between the heart and the kidneys. So it is talking about that, the, the sexual function, but it comes in strongly also with this heart chi. So there's a sense of depression about this. It's where the yin and the yang um, is, not, is not flowing smoothly, yeah? Um, there isn't that circular connection between the lower and the upper. This often is from a kidney yang deficiency um, and some damp heat, but it can also be, it's not, it, it's also for women is what I want to say. It seems like it's a formula that would be mostly for men, um, but it's not. It's not. I want you to think about this formula in your menopausal women. Yeah? Um, there's another place where that can be, this formula can be effective. Searching the soul, and the reason that, how, how is it that I came to use aroused power for women? Well, 95% of my practice was women. You know, I did infertility. I did, I did many women's things for many, many, many years. So um, I, 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 I didn't, I, I've not, you know, I think I've used it once for a man in, in so many years. So that's how I know it works there. But I don't use it very often because it just anymore. Um, but I thought it was, I, th I think it's worth looking at. These, I think this is not a formula that many people have really looked at and know about. And then finally, the formula uh, searching the soul in the yang section is um, basically for depression, yeah, with a yang deficiency. So we know that depression is, is certainly a problem for many of us. And I know all of us go in and out of uh, being overwhelmed, depressed, angry um, with all of the situations that are going on in the world and then in our own private worlds. Um, we can no longer run outside to avoid the inside. And so we've got to deal with the inside as well. So it's a load. And if there is depression and it, it, it has a background of kidney yang deficiency, searching the soul is an excellent, excellent formula. Now, you can't ever really leave the you can't really leave the uh, yin, the yang without the yin. When you go into the water element, you, the, I couldn't stop just a kidney yang because you can't. The kidneys are where the, they are the, the, the source of yin and yang. They're the essence. That's where the essence is held, yeah? Um, so you can't, you can't talk about the yang without saying something about the yin, 
That's one aspect of why I've added these two yin formulas here. And the second aspect is that um, you, you want to tonify a, a season ahead. That's the other part of this. So nourish the yin again is the zoe yang, and it's the um, nourish the, the left kidney. And um, it, it's for kidney yin deficiency. Using it together with invigorate the root, you would use invigorate the root in the morning and nourish the root at night if there was a combination of yin and yang symptoms. Nourish the soul is, your, your, is a formula that's based on um, uh, Swan Zhao Ren, yeah? It's got more nourishing. So this Swan Zhao Ren is really quite a sedative, we would call it a sedative formula in, in the herbal world. Nourish the soul has that formula in it, but it also has nourish yin herbs in it. So it doesn't quite have the same sedating formula as just uh, the Swan Zhao Ren. That's how I would talk about the difference between that. Okay, so I think I'm not going to go um, back and review for you the yang part of it, or what I would call the water winter part of uh, the pharmacy. I'm going to move on to the dosage considerations, just so I've got plenty of time to just be relaxed. I hate being really rushed in the end and you know, get that weird feeling. Okay, now let's talk about dosage considerations. And this is, a, this is an, I think, a really important thing for everyone to understand whether you're a beginner or whether you're a, you know, a, a very um, astute practitioner and experienced practitioner using pills. Um, when you're so these are examples and so the example is using expel wind heat for an invasion of wind heat for cold or a flu and this gets slightly into the cold flu thing um these are this is when you want whenever it's acute situation you can go high with the dosage and one of the things about herbal medicine i think that i've heard so many times over the years is just people out and kind of in the streets when I talk about who I am or, you know, or the, the, the subject of herbal medicine comes up, they oftentimes say, you know, I tried herbal medicine, but it didn't really work. And my answer to that is the dosage was wrong. They probably didn't take enough if it was a cute situation. So 12 tablets a day is, is you know, can certainly be taken in acute situations and certainly for the first 24 hours. Yeah. When, you're, let's, when you're addressing wind, which is, was a big topic and it is, the, is an emphasis on the formulas that we just previously talked about, you, you want to be taking the formula every couple hours and up to 12 a day. And even, <clears throat> excuse me, even if you wake up at night, People wake up often at night to urinate, they may be thirsty, they wake up for whatever reason. If you can take a dose at night, it's very good. Yeah, this is really, really helpful. Because again, it's this expelling, there's this, it's this wind thing at that point, and it's an acute wind, so it wants to expel it. Yeah, so having it in every two hours is, is, is very good. Um, so for chronic doses, you're going to lower, you're going to lower the doses, but for any of these wind things in acute phases, you want to go high with the dosage. Yeah. Um, and it could be for more than 24 hours. So what, what, what happens when, you know, you, your digestive system gets overwhelmed with pills, with taking Chinese herbs. Yeah. And this is by far the the most common of any kind of adverse effects of chinese herbs it's the digestion yeah again i will repeat myself with the food is the first place that i would go um i've gone to actually having them dissolve the pills putting them in boiling water and then letting them sit and drinking the tea that makes a big difference for um, weak spleens and digestive weakness. Um, and how do you know that that's happening for a person is they get 
um, pain. They might get some kind of, not, it's not really pain, but some kind of digestive, they feel them in their, their stomach. Um, they may get a lot of gas. I mean, that's, I think that's probably if there's only one, the top side effect of Chinese herbs is gas. As one patient put it to me, dog farts, and they're not fun. So um, again, food, uh, you might have to lower the dose. Um, I would, I don't know that I would lower the dose, but maybe I would have, be having them taken every three hours, um, something like that, spreading them out. Those are, those are good ways to, uh, to alleviate. And um, the, if there is any kind of uh, adverse effect from the herbs. Um, ben bamboo um, for chronic headaches. This is a really good uh, example of a formula that can be used in higher doses when there's an acute headache and in lower doses when you're treating it for chronic. Um, this particular formula works wonderful in this way, in being able to treat both chronic and acute, going high in the acute phases when you have the headache and going lower in your dose. What is lower in the dose? Lower in the dose could be four a day. You know, again, that depends. Depends on how long they're going to take it. Depends on how many symptoms you're seeing that, that are going to follow um, the symptoms, I mean, the not symptoms, but the pattern, identifying the pattern of the formula to the identification of the pattern in the patient. Um, it could be four a day, it could be six a day. I mean, just for me, I would probably go with four a day to begin with. I could, would go up to, I, I've told people to take four at a time when they're feeling like they're getting an acute headache four and then an hour later, four more. If the headaches are coming from a liver blood deficiency, if you've got that diagnosis right, it, it works fabulously, believe me. Okay, then you also have times that you're taking, because remember that the Chinese herbs, are, you have to always remember that herbs are the foods that you don't want to eat. You know, we eat a lot of herbs. If you eat culinary herbs, um, we eat a lot of herbs, but these were herbs that, you know, tasted horrible, yet had a very strong effect on the body one way or the other, yeah? So there's times of days, times of day that some herbs work better. Now, I would say for compliance with herbs, people only wanna take the herbs twice a day, unless they're having really acute symptoms. Unless they're really motivated to get it over with then um, then they will go three times a day. And if they're sick in bed, they will go three times a day. But by and large, working people, I can, you know, two a day is, twice a day is when they really do it. And maybe three times a day at night, once before they go to bed. And that's kind of how I try and fit the three times a day in, um, is at the night. Because people will take them in the morning and maybe in the evening. <clears throat> Compliances can be hard with people sometimes. So time of day, <clears throat> strengthen the root and ease the journey yang or higher in the, in the morning. So any kind of real yang tonic is going to work better in the morning. We're following the yin yang of the day. Yeah. Very simple. Nourish the root, ease the journey yin, which is Giovanni's formula for menopause. Our best taken at night because that, that's the yin part. So we, wanna, we want to get the yin, we want to get real juicy, basically. We want to juice up for the night, yeah? Blood, yin. So we can, you know, we can sort of go deeply into our sleep. Sue the center before food, because it has digestive. Brocade seniors, um, a higher, uh, the high, take a higher dose a half hour before breakfast. Um, clear the soul and root the spirit, take a higher dose in the evening. And of course, again, why? Because we, he's got herbs that calm the shin. So you've got uh, those herbs that are calming the shin and that's what we want to do at night. And expel wind, heat and expel wind cold um, after meals. Um, and you can take it with ginger water. 
ginger water is always going to be um, ginger, even drinking ginger tea when there's any kind of digestive upset from the herbs is also a good remedy. Um, Cause again, it's warming the stomach fire. The ginger is warming the stomach fire. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes it's that it's because we have low stomach fire or what we call low stomach acid in the West. And um, that's why we get this, it feels like hyper acid um, and uh, ginger tea, a light ginger tea is very effective. And of course, a strong ginger tea will be very diaphoretic, which is again, expelling the wind. Okay, um, let's see. When we're using one formula more, uh, excuse me, when using more than one formula. So this is the example, brighten the eyes to nourish the liver blood and freeing the moon to move the chi and pacify premenstrual syndrome, yeah? There's an overlap, the, 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 the overlap between brighten the eyes and freeing the moon is nourishing liver blood herbs. That's where the overlap of the, the herbs are gonna be. You're gonna get a double dose of nourishing liver blood herbs in, that, in the, the combination of these two formulas. So what you wanna do is you wanna di differentiate, do you need to move more chi or do you need to tonify more? And that's if you're using brighten the eyes and freeing the moon, um, if you want to move more chi, you're going to use a higher dose of freeing the moon and a lower dose of brighten the eyes. And if you want to do more tonification, and I think the reason that these two, for, these two formulas are here, again, have to do because we're, we're talking about nourishing blood, not to say that men don't need nourishing of liver blood, but in this case, freeing the moon is a formula uh, for premenstrual syndrome. Um, you, you want to look at, again, looking at what time of the cycle you would use the higher dose. Brighten the eyes would be used on the, on the yin after the period and freeing the moon would be used after ovulation, yeah? Um, at a higher dose, you could use it like that as well. So what you want to be doing is can also be taken that brighten the eyes would be taken in the morning and freeing the moon in the afternoon. That's because in the afternoon is it tends to, we tend to get more chi stagnant in the afternoon. Yeah? So we're going to tonify in the morning and move in the afternoon. So what this is all saying is it's saying that the more that you understand um, the basic gist of the formula, yeah? The pattern of the formula is the way to really begin to study these formulas if you're a beginner here. And it, because of the way that Giovanni has laid everything out so impeccably, and I know, I mean, it's like going into a book. I mean, the, the website, I'm really actually here for Sue Wen to teach you Giovanni's website. Um, it, just as though I would be in a school teaching you, you know, um, in, in school, uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, there's so much to, to learn um, in, in reading it all. Um, it's good for, to have it pointed out, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to do here for you, is to, for me, where I learned, how I learned, uh, to go from using raw herbs to using pills. I mean, the one way I learned is I used raw herbs, so I knew herbs. But what I had to come to understand is how do I teach people who don't knew, know raw herbs how to use these formulas? And the best way, again, to do it is by the pattern. Look at what the herb formula does look at your patient and is that the pattern you're seeing? Those to me is where it meets and it makes it um, relatively, not easy, but it's a way to study. You know, studying Chinese medicine is associative. You always go back to five elements, yin yang. You can learn anything, it all falls back 
into yin yang and five element. Um, so you can always you can always go you can learn anything you can just keep building on that once you've learned that and in in herbal medicine the caveat or the 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 uniqueness of herbal medicine is the hot and cold looking at the hot and cold giving for hot situations you give cooling herbs for cooling situations you give warming herbs Okay, um, now I'm going to, uh, what am I gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna ask about questions, I think. So let's see if there are questions. Hi, Charlie. Hi, so we have a couple of questions. So it's up to you if you want to move on to the questions or if you've got anything else that you wanted to cover. Um, no, I, you know what will happen is the questions will kind of um, jar me into a, a thing. So why don't we have the question first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one of the questions um, is from an acupuncturist who hasn't learned Chinese herbs yet, but they'd like some advice as to where they can learn Chinese herbs from, so the foundations and the fundamentals. Um, where they can... You know, that's a good question. I, I, I'm sorry that I can't tell you exactly where I would go. Um, I, I, Monica, is, uh, did it seem like they wanted a course? Me to recommend a course on Chinese herbal medicine? Um, it doesn't say whether it's a course necessarily. Um... Okay, well... <laughs> I think one of the things that I, that I would have to say is I don't actually know a course, but I think I, I think I almost answered that question in some of the last things that I talked about in the sense of Suwin herbs. I know there's so much there, I, I, people probably don't even know where to begin, but it is a book, just like it's Giovanni's books. I mean, what, if you're going to learn from yourself, you know, I would go to, uh, certainly go to Giovanni's herb books um, and uh, his fundamental books uh, to begin to learn herbal medicine. But I think you can, I have to say, if you want to learn to use herbal medicine, learn to understand Suwin herbs. I just, I'm sorry, I just have to say that because it's all there. It, it, there's so much information in in what Giovanni wrote. I mean, he really was very um, specific of how do you teach people who don't know herbs, acupuncturists who don't know herbs, how to use herbal medicine. That was really because, you know, in the UK, there were many, many at the time and still are just acupuncturists as there was in the United States, certainly 20 and 30 years ago. Herbal medicine and acupuncture were, you know, were kind of separate, uh, uh, separated much more than they are today where they've come together uh, and they're coming together so much more. So I, again, I would recommend that um, they look carefully, you know, if you want to start, look carefully at my notes, go to Sue Wen Herbs and just download anything and start listening to it. That's how you do it. It's an associated learning process. You're just going to go through the, sta the six stages, you know, the, but it's always going to come back to the five elements and yin and yang. It all falls back into that. So it, it, it's there to learn. I'm sorry, I don't know who's, you know, teaching an actual course on it. I mean, I did for many years. Um, I have, I have some recordings um, on my website that, that, I don't, that are old and we'll see how they work, but, but they are available there. Um, but again, I think, that, I think that what I'm excited about is having all of, having, you know, having the herbs and having all of the backup on a website, on an online thing, and, um, and being able to do these online teachings for people via Sue Wynn. 
So that kind of answers that question. I don't think it, you know, very well, possibly not very well, but I do think that, that, that they're clear about what I'm doing here. Anything else? Yes. So another question we have is when treating for chronic with herbs, how long should they take it? And if they don't get any results, what to do if the diagnosis is correct? Do they need to increase the dosage? Yes, such thank you. That is a perfect question. That is by probably 90% of the time, that's exactly what you need to do is increase the dosage, yeah? So basically what I start out in a chronic situation is if there is any, if I see that there's any kind of spleen weakness, like they really do have some, uh, chronic situation in the stomach and spleen. Um, then I would start out with four a day and I would go for four days at that dose, four or five days, have them call you back or, you know, text you back or however they're going to get back to you. And if there's nothing, they really feel nothing going on or it's very, usually they might say, well, it's very slight. Then I would up the dose to six a day. Yeah, and I would I would stay at six a day until there was a there was a I was feeling it it was rolling you know things were happening, and then you can kind of go down. One of the things that you want to think about with the herbal medicine is that when you compare herbal medicine to Western medicine, I mean I've given lots of lectures to physicians as well and done the yin yang of Western medicine versus Chinese herbal medicine and Chinese medicine in general, but particularly the herbal medicine in comparison, comparison to the pharmaceuticals. The Chinese herbs are very yin. They're very nourishing. Um, they're very slow in comparison to the pharmaceuticals. And I think I, I, I gave mention to this earlier as I was talking, in that um, they, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a process of going deeper than stopping a, a symptom, which is what pharmaceuticals do, which is what yang medicine does. That's what I would call yang medicine, is it just goes in and it's just, it's very strong and poof, it just tries to stop the symptom, yeah? Where when you're working with more yin medicines, they're going deeper into the body and when you're working with the herbal medicines, they're going deeper into the body. And many of the formulas are, are yin and yang. I mean, they stop the symptoms, but they also nourish something from within. So herbal medicine is really something that you really want to think about as um, like, kind of like vitamins in a way. Um, kind of like an ongoing, um, remedy. It's not just when you're sick, but Chinese herbs have the effect of tonifying and moving. And, and the reason I say that is because in China, people cook their herbs into their food. Chinese herbs were taken into the food. And so they were eaten all year round. Um, so I think as uh, as practitioners, now this is talking a little bit more to the practitioners themselves about them taking Chinese herbs pretty much all the time. I mean, I'm, a, I, I'm an example, you know, I, I guess this is, I'm going to be a good example for everybody. Let's see what I die of, okay? I mean, it's not, gonna, not that I'm going to die anytime soon, but I'm not, you know, I am older. And, you know, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see how I, as I age, because I've pretty much taken Chinese herbs for 30 years, pretty consistently. I've had, you know, chronic little things all along. And um, I feel that they, that, that they are part, they should be part of our diet in some way. And you might want to think about that um, as a herbalist for yourself, for yourself first. Anything else? Yep, so um, will Gloria C help with autoimmune disorders with dryness? Well, there is no way for me to do that diagnosis because autoimmune is, is really a Western diagnosis. And I can't tell you from a Western diagnosis 
um, whether it's, you know, if it fits the pattern. If that patient with that autoimmune disease has the pattern that is indicated in Gloria C, primarily in Gloria C, the primary um, pattern is liver blood deficiency. And then secondary cools the heat and, and clears the wind. If it fits that pattern, then yes. But the, a diagnosis of autoimmune disease is not a diagnosis of, in Chinese medicine. So that's as far as I can go with that. Also, we had, could Gloria C be used with vitiligo? Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've ever actually used that for that. And I don't, I'm going to say, I don't, I don't think I'd use this particular formula for it. But I do, I would say that the general, again, back to the general pattern. Um, we want to always go back, back to the pattern in Chinese medicine opposed to the Western disease. And I think that it's always, um, this is always a hard one because if you're coming from Western disease point of view, um, you, want, you want the same kind of answer. So again, I would have to say, if the patient presents with the pattern of liver blood deficiency, then I would say yes. So another question we have is, do you ever prescribe herbs only without acupuncture? Or do you usually give a patient both acupuncture and herbs? And in which situations would you prescribe herbs only, if that's the case? Gosh, what fabulous questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love, you know, the, the teacher, you don't know how much of your, unless you're a teacher, that you love good questions. Um, yes. Well, okay, from my own personal experience, I, I never practice acupuncture. I learned acupuncture, but I never practiced acupuncture. So they were completely herbs that I used, but I also used diet. Um, I used Chinese astrology, yoga. There were many other things I used with the herbs, but an, an, an acupuncturist, I was, I am not a licensed acupuncturist, and um, I didn't use them together. So that answers my own personal question. But I would, I do have an opinion on when you do use herbs and when acupuncture does work better. And being in California, in, in order to get a California license, you have to know herbs and acupuncture. That is, they're both part of the test um, to get uh, licensure in California. So um, the practitioners here in California, which there are many, 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 um, know both herbs and acupuncture. I would say one of, they practice one more than the other. And it's it, here in California, it's, you're either really proficient at acupuncture and um, you, you, you give a pill formula, basically. You, you have patent, standard patent medicines that you give out. Um, and uh, you focus on the acupuncture. Or if you're an herbalist and the herbs are your primary thing, you know, you put the needles in and you, that just keeps them quiet while you get the herbs ready for them. Um, so it's hard to be super, super proficient in both of them. But I would say that you could, uh, I would say the best way to go is to give both, is to give herbs and acupuncture together. And there are, were many times with my local patients that I sent them to acupuncturists, to local acupuncturists. Um, when did I do that? Again, for me personally, I was treating women mostly, and so I would have them see the acupuncturist um, right after ovulation, um, a time to move the chi. When you're moving chi more, acupuncture obviously is gonna do a much better job when you're tonifying yin, when you're tonifying blood. Um, the herbs are gonna be, gonna be very, very helpful in that kind of thing. 
Um, also breaking up blood. So you're gonna be able to move chi with acupuncture, but you're gonna break blood with the herbs. And this, these are two things that follow each other. So blood stagnation and chi stagnation are very much you know, uh, melded into each other. Um, that's one, of, one scenario where acupuncture and herbs are, is, come in really good. Um, did I answer the question? Because now I'm wondering, it was, it was a little bit long question, but I think I answered the question. You read the question again, Charlie, and see if I did. Or ask the question again. Let me just find the question again. Okay, or, or move on. I think, it, or move on. If there's another question, we can move on. But I think I did. Yeah, I'm sure they'll let us know if, um, if they want some more information. So another question we have. Are there any herbs and therefore formulas that patients should avoid with an autoimmune disorder who are taking immunosuppressants? Now, again, <laughs> this is sounding awfully much like Western medicine here. Um, we have to go back to the Chinese patterns. So when you, do, when you say autoimmune, um, it, 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 there's a pattern in Chinese medicine for autoimmune. Um, so again, it, you, you have to come up with a Chinese pattern for the patient in order to use the formulas. Um, there has to be some differentiation. I, I, it, I, it, it's hard for me to answer it because there has to be some kind of differentiation. I'm sorry, that's as, that's as much as I can do. So another question we have, I know you covered this um, last time in one of the webinars, um, but please could you recommend um, for COVID-19 from the pills that you've um, touched on today? Well, there is none. There is none of those pills except expel toxic heat that I, that I would recommend for viral situations. What I, again, what I would recommend for you to do is to go to the website, look at the paper I wrote, and you will see a protocol, a very succinct protocol for viral infection, how to dose it. Um, there's also a section in the beginning of prophylactically, um, the, the herbal formulas, herbal sentinel yin and herbal sentinel yang and children's herbal sentin, sentinel to be taken as a prophylactic. And that, that reckons back to what I talked to earlier about taking Chinese herbs as supplements um, and thinking about using them not in acute situations, but getting your, I guess because I'm an herbalist, getting your patients to understand that Chinese herbs are a good thing to take into their um, into their bodies, into their you know, into their what they're nourishing themselves with, yeah. And particularly with the way food is is very unnourishing, and most people don't nourish themselves very well, very well with food. Um, and it's hard to have good choices of good food. Um, so. So another question we have is um, for women going through IVF, is there any women's treasures formulas that shouldn't be used um, or that we shouldn't use due to the herbs and hormonal drugs interactions? Oh my gosh. Um, again, we're a little bit with Western medicine or with IVF, you know, um, the, you know, the, the hormones that are given in IVF are, you know, very strong. They're very direct. They affect very quickly. Um, when we talk about Chinese herbs in terms of their hormone modulating capacity, um, it, we don't think of them in that way. It's put into, again, the patterns. Um, 
And I guess this speak, what I want to speak to here now is this, <clears throat> the interaction between Chinese herbs and Western pharmaceuticals and what those interactions are and how do we look at those. And again, this has been a topic, and I have to say, you know, my first students were physicians, Western physicians. This was, you know, some 30, 35 years ago. So this idea of trying to, um, how can I say, weigh against each other, consider the yin and the yang of the medicines of pharmaceuticals versus herbs versus plant medicines. And particularly in Chinese herbs, because with Chinese herbs, we have the whole Chinese medical system is based on these patterns. These patterns that revolve around five element, five and yin and yang, two. They fall, again, it all falls back into that very, the, a template of numbers, which is what Chinese science is. So when, we, when we're talking about this interaction between drugs and, and herbal medicine, what I can say is from long, long time is that the hormonal thing is much more difficult to explain than, I'll explain, I'll explain it in a more simpler level. Many people who are using blood thinners, this is the biggest, you know, caution, caution that I suppose is put up is when you're using blood thinners and of course, Anybody using blood thinners would have the pattern of blood stasis in Chinese medicine. And we would want to give them herbs that would resolve blood stasis. What that's, what's gonna happen is your blood thinning herbs are going to become more potent. You're going to potentize those blood thinning herbs. Not, not so much that the Chinese herbs are blood thinning agents, because they're not really. What they do is they resolve stasis. Rather than getting it thin, just doing one thing like a blood thinner does is it thins it. The Chinese herbs are going to resolve it, so it's slightly more complicated. But it is they are going to potentize them. So you want that's how you want to be careful with the, the blood thinners. Again, when it comes back to the IVF and the and the um, and the Chinese herbs. Um, I have taught many years ago um, using the Chinese herbs with IVF. Um, there's a woman, Jane Littleton, who has a book. She's from Australia. Um, she talks a lot about it in her book. I think it's very helpful. Um, I've, you know, I've certainly in my practice um, gotten a few people pregnant just with Chinese herbs. Um, and. And, and I would say that my, because I taught a lot, uh, that's why I say a few, my practice, I've always done part-time practice. So even though it's been 30 years, it hasn't been 30 years of a full-time practice because I've always been teaching and presenting. Um, but they work, Chinese herbs work. They work fantastic with women's stuff. They're so much better than the hormonal. Because once you give a woman hormones, once you shoot her up with hormones, it really, it's so strong to change that natural flow of yin and yang that we have in our body. And especially with the woman, because she's, the rhythm of a woman is really important because we create, you know, we are the ones where the ancestors come through. So we are very in touch with nature and the yin and yang and the movement and the rhythm with the bleeding and the, you know, and the giving birth. It's really, it's, it's, you know, we're connected in a, in, a, in, a, in a yin way to the earth. So you want to use the Chinese herbs. You want to use them first. And you want to, if someone comes to you after they've used Western pharmaceuticals, uh, hormone replacements and birth controls and all of these things, be patient with the herbs. They will work. They will, they will work. And you need to go in with your patients and say that they will work. You know, women who've been on birth control and can't get pregnant, you know, they're completely flipped out. This is a whole nother lecture.
but yes, I guess the answer is yes, use them. Um, so another question here. So with regards to eczema, there's a side effect of steroids that's called TSW that causes hot red skin. Yeah. How do you look at it? Is it cool in heat and skin the same? Oh, that's such a great question. No, I don't think it is. And the reason I know that is because I know that, you know, I, I'm kind of like the, you know, the uh, Chiron, the wounded healer. I've had skin rashes and I've used pharmaceuticals and I've known what it's like to have that pharmaceutical skin rash happen and the skin rash that I'm talking about from the Chinese herbs. Um, the, the pharmaceutical one is much more severe. The, the one that you get from the Chinese herb thing is much more subtle than it. That, that, if, I'm, if I'm understanding the question, that, they're asking me a comparison about those two things and that, that is, that is um, how I see it. Uh, again, when you use steroids, it, it's again, I, believe me, I'm not opposed to steroids. I use a cream of steroid and um, Chinese herbs together. I've, I've never been opposed to using the yin and yang medicines together. Um, I know where some work better than the others, and I don't, of course, I'm not a, a doctor or a pharmacist, so I don't have the experience in the pharmaceutical thing, but, you know, the pharmaceuticals are everywhere, and, you know, many, many people use them, so I do have the experience via patients and via myself. There's, there's no reason in not um, combining these two medicines, and that will be the medicine of the future. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, the Chinese herbs are a very good, the yin is a very good balance to the yang. So um, the cortisone, but the cortisone is strong and people oftentimes will put cortisone creams on a skin rash and say, I'm never using it again because it burns so bad. It's not that, kind, you won't have that kind of a reaction with the Chinese herbs. We also have, um... Is there special recommendations um, to increase immunity for people after transplants, such as liver or kidney? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, immunity after surgery. Well, of liver and kidney, I mean, those are pretty specific surgeries. Um, But I would say an overall, you know, I don't, I, I have to be very general here. And I, I just want to say, I think an overall chi tonic um, would be the way that I would go. A chi and blood tonic is the way that I would go, um, not directly after surgery, but because if you were really a good Chinese herbal medicine person, you would be able to give them a formula that kind of invigorates blood and helps with the pain, but not too much, depending on the, the nuances of the surgery and how weak the patient was themselves. But sometime after that, um, uh, I, and I'm talking about a week or maybe two weeks, I would give a bit of a chi tonic to them. Um, Maybe even, and I think I, I would use Giovanni's Prosperous Earth as a, a, a general chi, spleen chi tonic. Um, and I would, you know, after surgery, the best thing you can do is feed them well. The bone broths, nourish them, um, nourish them the food that they're eating, um, warming foods. Um, Again, bone broth is, is wonderful soups. Um, it, it really encourages those things. Because um, it sounds like maybe you're a Western doctor who's asking about after those surgeries. I don't know, maybe you're not, but um, the food, and if you're, even if you're not, acupuncture, it's amazing to me how you weren't taught uh, uh, the medicine, the food medicine in school. And so many practitioners don't practice themselves the food medicine and don't recommend it to their patients. It's very important and most very important after a surgery. Surgeries are very hard. They're very, very young. You've got a huge pit of yang beyond your belief. 
and the yin needs to be nourished very, very much afterwards. And how we do that is with diet. So we are coming close to the end of the webinar now. So I'll and we'll ask another question. Um, and then if there's any questions that we haven't covered or that you think of after the webinar, please feel free to drop me an email at charlie at suenherbs.com and we can make sure that we cover all those for you. Um, so another question is, in eliminate toxic heat, Lingzi is an ingredient. Would this not tonify the pathogen you want to expel? Yeah, I say that's a very good question. Um, the way that I could see this formula, the, the, the Huang Qi, the herb right before Lingzhi, so the Huang Qi, the astragalus, the Lingzhi Ganoderma, the mushroom, are the only two tonics in the formula. And one of the things that, that Giovanni how Giovanni made his formulas when he made his formulas is that whenever there, that whenever there was the underlying problem of, let's say, a kidney deficiency, um, in, in, uh, and I'm using this as an example because it's so prevalent in the women's formulas, that there's, ki oh, there's kidney tonics throughout Giovanni's formulas for women because that is a fundamental, like as I was talking about a layer, that deeper layer that, that you're going into when you're treating this. Um, and when you're treating a formula like, ex when you're using a formula like expel toxic heat, every other one of the, f the herbs, aside from the ganzao, are cold, bitter herbs. So he used Wang Qi, what I'm, I imagine just to strengthen and bring up the, the, the um, Qi, as well as Wang Qi is, it relieves the surface a little bit. Um, and the Ling Zhe, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know personally why he chose that one exactly. Um, but I don't know, you know, it could have been, I didn't know that Giovanni was, I didn't, didn't understand Giovanni to be really into medicinal mushrooms. So maybe one of his colleagues, you know, uh, a, a mushroom person, you know, told him that would be a good mushroom in there. I mean, it's going to calm the shin. We know that Lingzhi calms the shin and we know that it's going to enhance immunity. Um, and we know that it's an adaptogen. So it's neutral in its uh, cold, hot, and it may, he may have chosen it for that. But I don't know exactly why. This was one of the later formulas of Giovanni's. Um, and um, I don't know that I didn't ask him that and I don't know that. So I think that's the last question for the, the webinar. I think I'd like to, to wrap it up here. You know, I've really enjoyed um, being with you. I hope that you've gotten some good things out of this time that we've spent together. And um, I hope that you will, you know, we'll do it again. Um, I do want to say that I do have uh, Chinese medicine seminars on my website um, and that um, you can get a hold of me through East um, Earth Medicine Wisdom, my website. And I, it's been really nice. And I hope that I will be doing more of these uh, kinds of things for Sue Wen. And um, take really good care everybody. Um, I know it's hard times and we have to be, I mean, there are times where I'm really down. I mean, I know the feeling both up and down, but I want to wish you all very well and um, take good care. Many blessings. So thank, thank you, Anastasia, for sharing your insight and expertise. We really appreciate that. Um, I'll finally just share a slide with you, just with a few links for you. Um, that you might find useful. So on our website, suenherbs.com, that's where you can access a wealth of practitioner resources as Anastasia has already covered. So um, there's the Suen Herbs product manual, there's educational presentations, articles, um, formula information and um, so feel free to have a browse and download all the information there it's all there for you 
Um, also, if you are interested in ordering any of the formulas, you can do so at suenherbs.com forward slash order hyphen online forward slash. And there you will also find a complete list of all our distributors information there as well for the USA, Europe and also New Zealand. And finally, the link at the bottom takes you to the practitioner support page. So that's where the replay um, of the webinar will be made available and also contact details for our practitioner support team can be found there. So if you have any other questions uh, further down the line, feel free to contact them. They're very helpful. Um, yeah, so on that note, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for the webinar. Again, another special thank you to Anastasia for giving her time and sharing her insight with us. We really appreciate that. And I'd like to just wish everyone a wonderful rest of your day or evening. Thank you.